Hello, it's Ray and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing a painting that is a daytime painting initially, but we'll try to see how we can convert it into a nighttime painting. Also, this is going to be a pretty calm video, so no screaming at all. <gasps> this is a calm video, don't worry about it. Let's get started. When I started drawing this, I wanted to find a scene uh, that kind of conveyed the nighttime versus daytime thing pretty clearly. So I picked a vending machine in a fairly countryside Japanese setting. Mostly because it picked, uh, it showed the night was day contrast really well, and also because I'm obsessed with Japan. <laughs> that was so bad. Before we start our painting, I, well, as is common nature for me by now, went to Pinterest to find a bunch of references, and. You may wonder how much is an appropriate amount of references. The answer is a lot. The reason I like finding a lot of references to draw something that isn't even remotely related to the references I'm finding is mainly because it, it kind of insinuates creativity. I learned this technique, not technique, but tip, I guess, from an artist on Instagram who's really cool called Devin Ellie Kurtz. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering their name, but they are an incredible artist who does background art. And one of the main tips they gave when finding references is to find a lot of them rather than like rely on one. And that that has been massively helpful in my work as well. So to start off, I put my thing in a grid and I put my references close to me because. Uh, Clip Studio Paint has this really cool sub tool that sub tool sub view thing that lets you keep your references close to you. Anyway, um, I started sketching and I will see you when I'm done sketching and we start the first time of day, which is the daytime portion of the drawing. So now we'll be starting the daytime portion of this drawing. I find it always helpful to build the daytime or like the scene with the most amount of light first because that tends to give more of the detail in the drawing and the cooler colors of the night are generally very bad at portraying detail if you do it like accurately because uh, the, the nightly colors always bring out a lot of shadows and even the light is very dim in a lot of night paintings and night settings so it's always helpful to know what the detail is before you convert it into a nighttime painting and uh, for this one I am not doing any particularly harsh line out even later on I'm just going to refine the edges and currently I'm just going to lay down the colors that I see the, the colors that I want and I wanted to I wanted this to have sort of a more early morning-ish feeling so I'm going to just lay down the colors and do some of the shading to begin with and then let's go from there doing Paintings like this, like without the line art, is actually kind of difficult if you aren't used to doing that sort of thing. But the thing that can really help with the the feel of drawing without line art or the feel of drawing without a lot of structure is to kind of like utilize the the advantages that digital art gives you. What I do is I use a lot of brushes that I customize or that I find from the internet that because the internet is such a huge resource, it's, it's everything. You can find brushes that are specifically to, like akin to your needs and 
For example, I'll show some of the brushes I used for this one. The cool thing about digital art brushes is that it can literally be any variety. Actually, I think the best thing about digital art is the ability to try out so many different mediums. And I think it's almost such a shame that a lot of people don't do that. Like, it is true that you don't need brushes, like custom ones specifically to make good art on digital programs, but it is certainly like very interesting and a lot more fun in my opinion to use them and to make like cool stuff with them as you can see there's like a lot of textures that i used uh, some of these i actually used in this drawing as well i'll actually show the ones i specifically used i used this one uh these ones in this specific drawing i got this and again from a different artist who has their brushes like on the web for free not the last one but like the other ones are a combination of my customized ones for Clip Studio Paint and just the ones I've found from artists. So I definitely recommend using brushes, like if you can find them or if you want to customize them yourself, Clip Studio has like an amazing asset library. So go find brushes, there are free ones, there are paid ones, there are really elaborate ones and fun ones. You can Someone made a squid game brush, I don't know why. <laughs> Like for real, someone made a brush out of the heads of Squid Game characters. What? <laughs> if, you, if you want to try it out, there are infinite options. So I definitely recommend trying out custom brushes. So this portion of the drawing is when I started adding like shadows and highlights to the drawing. I like to do this in a neutral way. Like, you know how like there's always some sort of light and you know the first areas that get like covered in shadow and a light from a certain direction comes in adding those first like for example like the crevasses of people's necks or stuff like that where the shadow definitely goes to is easier and like when you're specifically converting something from a like a daytime painting which contains a lot of light to a nighttime painting which contains very uh, focused points of dim light it's easy to keep that like consistency still throughout the drawing if you do like a slightly neutral and since i wanted a morning kind of feeling i added a lot of like direct lighting and another thing i learned recently from another youtuber is to when transitioning from light to shadow to have like a color like purple and blend it in and it looks far more natural than just going from like gray shadow to like yellow light or something and that transition is far more bearable when you have like a purple mixed in there once the shadows were done i added the well, I, I just grabbed a soft airbrush and started uh, kind of re like bathing the scene in light. I did this with the only layer and an added glow layer. I think it helps to add some like tiny highlights where like in glass, in reflective surfaces like metal here in the signpost and some places of the um what do you call that thing telephone pole why did i start a youtube channel i can't describe things anyway we're done with the daytime one it looks like this now we can descend into the night like batman but with art where was i going with that the nighttime scene i began with slightly desaturating the colors and the highlights mainly taking out the added glow layer thing that i have put up on it and like making the colors a little bit more bluish you can do this by adding a color layer and also desaturating the picture a little bit to begin with but then adding like a color layer color layer means like it, it's basically just a blending mode called color that you find in clip studio there are other you can use hue you can use you can use a bunch of blending modes to achieve the same effect slightly differently i also used a slight gradient map and then lowered the opacity a lot 
so I can actually make it seem like I didn't just convert this into color, uh, convert this into a nighttime painting, and I actually drew the cool dogs to begin with. Um, having the vending machine in this scene actually helped a lot because that gives a very dim source of light that looks super authentic even if you like just turn it into blue. It looks very much in the scene once you do it because a vending machine, uh, it isn't unnatural for a vending machine to have electrical looking light as opposed to sunlight. Um, another thing that I did in this particular drawing was to kind of make it feel like someone took a photo on their phone of a nighttime scene and to do this what I did was I just added a bunch of slight highlights and then I went in and just textured it a little bit. I also added a texture layer, a noise layer which makes it look like you took a photo of a nighttime scene rather than you drew it and then converted it. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed the process of making a daytime scenery into a nighttime scenery and let me know what you think and just I hope it helped if you were trying to do this as well. I will be back soon. Bye. There are no jump scares today. Bye. <laughs>